biggie is medications, or rather medication side effects. So, some of the classics with functional decline, benzodiazepines, these are awesome drugs. They can work really, really well. We may use them as uh, a muscle relaxant to help somebody sleep or to take care of anxiety, okay? And they work really well. And that's one reason they're so popular. However, they have some significant side effects. And what research has shown, when people have side effects to medicine with cognitive function, the person with the side effects may not be aware that it's giving them the side effect. Think about it. Think about uh, people when they're drunk. Okay? How often the person thinks they're just fine. You know, you're grabbing the keys, you're taking the battery out of the car so they won't drive. Okay. But that person thinks they can drive fine. Kind of similar concept to what we'll see with medication side effects. The older antidepressants, nortriptyline, Elevil, these often will work really, really well to help people sleep or with nerve pain, but they do have some significant side effects. Okay? Um, some of the cardiac medications, when prescribed perfectly for the cardiac condition, sometimes they, you stand up, your blood pressure goes down. And it's a real catch-22 between, you know, we need a heart. And if you weren't on that medicine, you'd be having chest pain and maybe another heart attack. But it can cause that drop in blood pressure or slowing of heart rate that affects your exercise ability. And it can cause that fatigue and slowing. Um, sleeping pills. No offense to the Tylenol company, but Tylenol PM, okay, can affect your cognition, your brain function the next day. They did a research study on antihistamines, and they found that people who took antihistamines could be even more impaired than somebody who had been drunk the night before, including cognitive function for driving. Okay. And as we live in the allergy belt, that's really important to know. Okay. The other thing important to know is I've talked about some medicines and their significant side effects, but of course, that may be the perfect medicine for you overall. So certainly don't go stopping any medicine. Talk to your healthcare provider on that. The thing with the functional decline, especially the physical functional decline, is it can set in so slowly. So that's why it's good to kind of know what your abilities are and to monitor yourself for change. And of course your loved ones too, especially your older loved ones. Um, another thing to keep an eye on is if there's an acute illness, okay? Most of the time after an acute illness, we want to get you back to where your baseline was. So I'll see this a lot with my older, frail people that I take care of in clinic. They get pneumonia. They are really, really sick. They're in the hospital for a week. They're doing good to just get out of bed and get to the chair. A lot of deconditioning happens during that time, okay? Bed rest, we used to think, was very healthy. We now know it's really something we want to keep to a minimum in most conditions. So, especially an older, frail person with an acute illness can really decline. So we want to get them back into rehabilitation and get them as close as possible to their baseline. Um, if you're the caregiver of a person, and since I'm a geriatrician, that's, and I'm talking to you, probably is gonna be an older person, but if you're a caregiver for any dependent person, that's why it's good to kind of have a handle on what their baseline is. What they're able to do, how fast, oh, they can walk six blocks, it takes them this long to walk the six blocks. Uh, they can make it up their stairs on their own. It's really some objective things. So if that person does get sick, uh, we're not having to depend on our on memory now. How long did it take them to walk six blocks? You know, we just got it written there to help them get back to their baseline. So if there is a decline, get into rehabilitation. Um, if it's a significant decline, a place like Cardinal Hill, but also a lot of our nursing homes are developing short-term um, rehab programs where folks are just going to be in for a few weeks. Okay, so a lot of times people hear nursing home, and that's synonymous with I'll never go home. Okay, but I want to have that on everybody's radar screen that they're doing sort of a subacute rehab in these facilities. 
I've seen some of them, they're remodeled, they look beautiful, have excellent programs. So think about that. Because um, people we stay there just a few weeks and then go home. Hopefully a lot safer and more sure. And there's pretty good insurance coverage for that. So really important. One of the things that we talk about as we get older is that just downward spiral. We also talk about our hearing impairment, too. Because <laughs> that's one of the things that um, it is becoming more and more rewarding. Um, I reached 50 last year, and I remember when I started practicing, it was like, well, you know, when you get older, when you get older. Now it's changed to, well, now that we're getting older. <laughs> and I'm just relating more and more to the folks I see. It's actually been very, very rewarding. So... Um, and my kids are wondering why Santa didn't bring me the hearing aids in my stocking this year. <laughs> okay, so preventing the downward spiral. Know where you're at. Maintain that during acute illness or injury. Try to get back up to your baseline. And if you don't get back up to your baseline after that pneumonia, make sure you get into your health care provider to see, well, maybe you've got some anemia. Maybe it's a medication side effect. Try to find the culprit or why you're not getting back up to your baseline. Uh, look at yourself or anyone that you're taking care of. You're kind of going, you know, are they able to do? Are we able to do what we used to be able to do? Are we as happy as we used to be? Okay. Is there something missing in our life? So, when it comes to functional decline, that decline in our, our health, we want to make sure that we found the root cause. All of them. Okay. Um, don't just chalk that up to aging, okay? An older loved one in the hospital with pneumonia, and now they're walking with a cane, okay? Now, it may be very good that they're walking with a cane to prevent a fall, but how did we go from walking well, pneumonia, to needing a cane? Is that because of all the muscle weakness that set in because the immobility from the pneumonia? <laughs> Make sure that a comprehensive evaluation is done. And often this needs to be repeated. Because the first time you saw your provider and they did lab work, maybe things were still within normal limits, but at the lower level, and then you repeat it, and now they're low. Okay? Um, if you still can't find anything, look into getting a second opinion or a subspecialist to join the team. So I work with doctors of physical medicine and rehabilitation. Boy, do they have a lot of tricks of the trade of figuring out why someone didn't get back to their baseline. For an older adult, this is something that I love working with people on to help them reach the highest level that we can get them to reach. Okay. The other thing, our other experts out there, physical therapy, occupational therapy, all of our rehab therapists have so much to offer somebody with functional decline. What I, I hate to hear is like, well, you know, mom's 92. I think she's too old for physical therapy. And oftentimes when I talk to some folks about physical therapy, I, I think that they're picturing us out on the schoolyard and gym doing jumping jacks. <laughs> you know, we, it's not jumping jacks. The physical therapist will design, will tailor a program just for that person that's doable. So some other things that will float in as we get older. Osteoarthritis, okay, often called wear and tear arthritis. Lots of different types of arthritis may get lumped into osteoarthritis, but what I want to make sure that people know, that's very common with aging, but not to be considered normal aging, nothing you can do about it, okay? If you have a joint and it hurts for more than five minutes after an activity, you could be causing damage to that joint. So we want to look at what activities you're doing that are hurting that joint and try to modify them, okay? We want to look at strengthening around that joint so you help protect that joint. So at the first sign of arthritis, I want someone getting into a physical or, and or occupational therapist. Occupational therapists tend to do a lot of work with the hands, and that's often where the arthritis will set in. Um, what's really important to me is that we don't just focus on medicine for pain control. Pain control is important, okay? But we want to look at cause, at root cause there. The other thing is often that arthritis is going to set in on our weight-bearing joints 
And if we're overweight, just losing five or ten pounds can help with pain control. Okay? So I've known some people that are very overweight. I see them at my family reunions. I have so I have great empathy because most of the people in my family have struggled with their weight. So I have great empathy for that. And so when we talk about uh, losing weight and how that can help with your health, a lot of folks will say, 50 pounds, I've tried, you know, been there, done that. So here again, short-term goals, long-term goals, but just five pounds can really help with pain control. The other thing is osteoporosis. We have more and more and more treatments available for osteoporosis. This is super common as we get older. For women, it's a little bit more a part of our usual health care with primary care. But you guys, you're about 10 years behind us. It's going to hit you too. Okay? Unfortunately, insurance is not as good at covering bone density testing for you guys. I'm sorry. Okay? But still, please have it on your radar screen. We can get creative legally and see if we can get it covered. It's a very simple test, and we have so many more treatments available. But one thing I always like to make sure people know is that often calcium and vitamin D is not enough if you've got osteopenia or osteoporosis to treat it, okay? So there's a number of medicines available to help with bone density. Also exercise, weight-bearing exercise can help a lot. We're finding out vitamin D deficiency is much more common than we ever thought. Um, so make sure you're getting a vitamin D level done. Okay. Mine, was, I was deficient about two years ago. Compression fractures. Now we're going to test my, my ADLs here. Can she use the pointer? Okay. Um, so when bones get very weak, one of the common places to get a fracture is in our vertebra. And as we know, some of us know all too well, as we get older, we start to shrink. Okay. Some of that is probably some compression of the intervertebral disc, some of it relates to hydration, some of it can be compression fractures. And the dowager's hump, okay, how especially as women get older, but also men, we get that curvature in our backs that's often due to the compression fractures. <coughs> but I've seen so many people through the years, like, oh, it just runs in my family. It just runs in my family. There's nothing to be done about it. That's just genetic. It is. But it's due to a condition that we've got some treatments for now. Feet. Our feet really do a number on us when we get older. Okay? Uh, thick and toenails, fungus. Okay? So when toenails look like that, not normal aging, get in with a podiatrist. Okay? Bunions. Uh, that joint gets kind of big there. Um, Used to, we just said, well, it's because we wore high heel pointy shoes. Well, that didn't heal. But they've actually found bunions in societies, also remains of societies, that never wore shoes. It's a biomechanical problem. Here again, podiatrists can do a lot to prevent it. So I'll often see somebody with a bunion. We need to get you a podiatrist. The next sentence they say is, I don't want surgery. Good. See the podiatrist. They can help you prevent the surgery. This can interfere with people's walking, increased risk of falls. Any pain in your feet, change of shape of your feet, red areas, get to see a podiatrist or orthopedic surgeon that focuses on that. <coughs> Breathing problems, um, emphasis, COPD, effect of cigarette smoking, secondhand smoking, other toxic exposures. You get shorter breath walking up a flight of steps. You used to not. You didn't see your doctor and get that evaluated. <laughs> 